First of all, I'd like you all to close your eyes and try to visualize a farm. I'm sure the first thing that would come to your mind is an image of a poor farmer working manually on a piece of land. Just like the field shown in the movie Lagan, where the farmers are constantly praying for good rains to have a harvest enough to feed the whole village. But, um, yeah. uh, so, uh, um, harvest enough to feed the whole village. And uh, after that, um, they also had, um, uh, it's a hand-to-mouth existence for these farmers. They have creditors hanging around in the background and the rain gods playing trant. This is my perception about farming and to a certain extent is a reality for most of the small farmers in India. A year back I went for a small vacation to Kenya and this is the place where my understanding of farming underwent a paradigm shift. For most of the developing countries, this uh, perception about farming is quite similar. We all believe that farming is an industry done by poor, uneducated farmers who um, basically do that to make a living. None of us can be blamed for thinking like this because this is the best we have seen. When in Kenya, I was supposed to go and visit my uncle's farm. I must confess, I was not really keen on going and visiting this farm as I had heard enough about it from my uncle. I told my mom that I was here in Kenya to see the big five and not waste my time on, a, uh, on visiting an ordinary farm. And I argued that we have loads of them back home, so why do I need to go to Kenya and watch the same farm? And, um, but then, uh, as usual, uh, she managed to convince me by promising me dire consequences if I managed to wriggle out of this trip. And uh, so I went to the farm, and on the farm, this is what I saw. Yeah, so um, my uncle is one of Kenya's largest um, greenhouse rose producers. And um, when I was over there, I saw he had two farms, and on his farms he used different technologies, like greenhouses, hydroponics, uh, automatic fertigation systems, and drip irrigation. And uh, he talked about harvests in tons and millions, whereas all I had heard from farmers over here was in mere thousands and kilograms. And this is the first time I had seen farming being conducted as an enterprise, as a business. Um, when I uh, saw this, I also saw that he had 65 hectares of greenhouses and employed over 1,200 people. Um, but I still wasn't convinced of farming as an idea. I just couldn't imagine myself standing in the middle of a crowd and saying, Hi, I'm a farmer. But um, soon I realized and I read and realized that uh, farming forms the very foundation of our society. It caters the whole population with proper nutrition, thereby fulfilling the most basic need of uh, human society. B but still uh, another thought came to my mind, which was that um, there, are, there are always farmers going to be there in the future, and there would be food in the future, so why should I become a farmer? But then I remembered the words of my teacher, who always used to ask me that if not you, then who? And then I started thinking of the career of agriculture a bit more seriously. But I yet did not do anything substantial till, till I got an opportunity to participate in TYE, which is a competition for uh, young entrepreneurs. It is a youth um, chapter of the Indus Entrepreneur, which aims to foster global, uh, uh, sorry, foster entrepreneurship globally. And uh, when uh, we, were, we were participating over there, I was looking for more novel, exciting ideas. But I couldn't find any, and I'm fortunate that I couldn't find any. So I started researching about this idea of farming and technology in farming. Um, I, uh, I was looking for uh, ideas, I was sharing it with many people, but there were no takers for my idea until I met Shivam who also showed a lot of interest. And our team and us underwent and uh, researched different aspects about farming, ranging from technical aspects to financial aspects. Yeah, so uh, when you were first formulating your idea, you thought it'd be cool to grow vegetables such as uh, lettuce, or broccoli, because they're exotic, at a high selling prices, and they're growing in popularity. We later on went to drone research in the world of uh, agricultural or actually not agriculture, sorry, uh, in the world of uh, retail vegetable sales. Uh, we research factors such as uh, the variety of the vegetables which are sold, uh, uh, the demand for these vegetables, and the prices. 
As the few hours that we spent there, we realized a trend. Tomatoes, potatoes, and onions were being sold in the biggest quantities, and our beloved lettuce and broccoli had barely been touched. We wanted to find out why. We looked for patterns, and we found a similarity between these three, which was that they were all cheap, versatile, and used in almost every single Indian dish. For example, think about it. My favorite dish, Dalma, was made with potatoes. Tomatoes make tasty gravies, and, uh, and onions accompany them in almost every meal. And all together, they make a tasty and nutritious meal. So this is when we knew that we'd be better off choosing out of these three vegetables for our business plan. When it came to it, we chose tomatoes. We chose tomatoes because tomatoes are inherently perish, and they have the highest wastage rate. They have the highest wastage rates, uh, which can range up to 25% from uh, farm to end consumer. Internationally, this rate is only about three to five percent, and that's when we knew that the tomato would be the crown jewel of. There is a lot of other problems with uh, the farming procedure. The process for growing tomatoes is actually, uh, it's really, they take the tomatoes and they spray them with all kinds of harmful uh, pesticides and chemicals in order to make them grow faster and bigger. But in the end, the farmers are barely compensated for, and the tomatoes are up to par. So we have more than one issue here, and we had to make a business plan which addressed all these issues and also showed amazing financial backup, an innovative production method, and overall viability. So by the time we are done, by, so by the time we are done making our business plan, uh, I mean it probably had everything, and we're ready to present it. Now let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, money talks. <laughs> when we are able to. When we were able to present our business plan and show that uh, we were making huge returns which were non-taxable and the government even offered subsidies on projects like ours, uh, the, the judges were impressed. We placed first locally and when we went to go compete internationally, we secured the second runners-up position. Yeah. So this is the time when we realized that there was a lot of, lot of potential in this idea. If you brought lo knowledge into agriculture and educated different uh, farmers already, uh, uh, farmers, and uh, if we got youth into this sector, there could be a, po a potential uh, agriculture revolution in India. We could uh, possibly bring in the world technologies, world best practices to make the agriculture more efficient in India. So we studied some statistics and we found that India is a primarily agricultural based economy, which was great for us. But we also found out that a lot of these vegetables are exported to other countries, while there are still children here dying from starvation, and we wanted to find out why. We soon found our answer. Here you see the wheat prices. The wheat prices rose 48.5% in just one year. Now how can we expect a poor person to afford such a steep rise in prices? The picture was clear, but it grew blurred. Because according to my somewhat knowledge of economics, if there is more supply, there should be cheaper prices. But this was definitely not the case. So we started uh, looking and researching about the methods of conventional farming, to hoping to find an answer over there. We found several, that there are several hurdles in this process, which made it inefficient. A few of these hurdles included things such as uh, rough weather, uh, scarcity of water, and less arable, arable land which was available. But on top of all, the demand and supply for these vegetables was increasing. But the problem came in when the demand was rising at a much faster rate than the supply. This is when we decided to call upon the big five in Kenya. Not the leopards, not the lions, or the rhinos, or buffaloes, or elephants. But the big five ideas we got from the technologies used at my uncle's farm. Yeah, so the first technology uh, that we saw was greenhouses. Greenhouses basically protect the plants from uh, the forces of nature. Uh, within a greenhouse, we can control all sorts of factors such as uh, temperature, evaporation rates, uh, humidity, and a few other things. But most of all, these greenhouses protect the plants from uh, protect the plants from external dangers such as pests and insects, which greatly reduces the need for insecticides or pesticides in the growing process. It's actually amazing that some of these greenhouses are so high-tech that we can control anything from, uh, let's say, temperature all the way to the level of carbon dioxide present at a certain time.
Another great technology which we saw over there was drip irrigation. Now this technology uh, was a technology which saved 60 to 70 percent of the water by directly giving stipulated amounts of water to the plants. And uh, this was all the more relevant for the Indian con context because the conventional methods of farming waste a lot of water. And um, if uh, we use this technology, then we could save the water because the water resources are going scarcer and the future are predicted to grow costlier. Yeah, so what we want to do now is incorporate these big five ideas into the, into the minds of the youth who are interested in agriculture. We can't expect the farmers today to uh, adopt these new methods right away. So we need the youth of India to become interested in agriculture. And we need them to uh, learn more about sustainable agriculture and saving the planet. And we wanted to show them that it's a viable career option. Now, uh, for this, we made a page called Agricultural Connection, which showed our experiences and what we knew about agriculture into this page and encouraged youth to participate in the discussions as well as learn more about farming. Now, uh, we hit almost uh, 400 or 500 uh, views on the page, and uh, we hope to create a ripple effect across the nation to have the young minds venture into this uh, industry. We've actually started this project, me, Rahul, and a third partner, on a small area of land uh, of about one acre. We want to showcase that this technology really works, and we want to show that this is the technology that we need, and this is a change that needs to be there in agriculture. We want to start a revolution, hydroponic farming. Thank you.